Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, para hadirin yang dihormati sekalian. I thought the lights went out because they heard that I was about to, give, to make a speech. You know. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Lim Hock Song, for inviting me. When I look at the guest list, I said, are you sure I'm supposed to be in this conference? <laughs> And then after the first session, I thought I should take uh, the first flight home. But then, uh, <laughs> but uh, one thing that uh, I'm uh, very, very impressed with is not about uh, what Sarawak is doing, but how the audience is still here. <laughs> okay, take <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> I think in the university, half will be gone, or maybe all of them will be gone. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I'm a minority among minorities in uh, this day one, but uh, I have always been uh, a minority uh, with the Malays because I believe that all cultures and all heritage is equally important. And that is why uh, I think people like Akmal Saleh will probably not agree with that. And then I'm also a minority as a Muslim uh, because I view spirituality in the larger perspective where all faith have its uh, role and its background and has a unity uh, to all of us as human beings, which I don't think Hadi Awang agrees with that. <laughs> and also I'm a minority among academia because I believe that knowledge is for the uh, is uh, is is for the agent of social change, and not for university rankings or giving money to the national professor council, <laughs> which I think all the vice chancellors don't agree with it. You know, <laughs> and uh, finally I also am a minority of sort among politicians because I actually believe in the uh, vision of our founding fathers of Malaysia, where all our uh, cultural diversity and all our multi-faith aspects are our strength and something that we must accord dignity to all equally and that <laughs> and that we should never, ever let politics be governed by the narrow-mindedness of race and religion. All right, that, is, that is something that we need to, uh, to have. So, so what actually is the problem of our nation? If we, if we ask some people, they say, economy is the problem of our nation. They think that if the ringgit is strong and there's a lot of uh, FDI, then our country will be okay. But I don't think so. And when you ask some people, and I think here also they have been saying, that education is the problem. If our children can do better in maths, better in science, and better at English, then our problems will go away. I don't think so. Because 25 years when I see this country, I see that our main problem, from my perspective, is somehow we have a mistrust of each other, a mistrust that is embedded into communities. And lately, I see a disturbing trend of even hatred between faith. And this is something that we need to understand. And if we think that other problems are bigger, then we will never go anywhere. And so if you look at the, uh, the, the, the problem of diversity, it is uh, because we have a divisive teacher in religion. And our education is what I call an industry-based education. And if you have an industry-based education, then you forego a lot of the humanities. And that is why I never learned much about Sarawak or Sabah. Because our nation, well, in one sense correctly, was looking to this industry base. But I said it should have expired 30 years ago. 
We have more than enough architects, more than enough engineers, more than enough technocrats. We need more humans. This is a problem. That is why I think that we should relook at the way that we teach history as well as, most importantly, religion. Whenever I give a speech about politics, people expect that I have a formula of changing the perspective of the Malay society, or the Muslim society, or the political parties, or the civil servant. And they are very surprised when I said, look, if you want to have change, it's very simple. We need to change. Who? We. Who? Kita lah. Satu orang, satu orang, satu orang. And they don't believe that. I said, no. This is, you cannot blame it on one person like Tun Mahathir, or one party like Amno, or one race like the Malays. I'm not here to defend all this. I'm here to give you a simple, academic, and spiritual understanding that change must, must come from us, each and every one of us. We need to grow. In order to change, we need to grow. And we need to learn to unlearn and then learn again. I just finished a book written by Tun Wan Junaidi because I wanted to know more about Sarawak and I read his book, 540 pages long, on him being a policeman. It will be in my star column uh, next week. So in order for us to, to, to grow, we must learn to respect others. This is also a huge problem. Why is it that I have to say that we need to respect? Respect is not about being polite. And this is something which I will explain. So in order to respect, we need to treat others with dignity. Doesn't matter who it is, but we need to have that perspective. So in order to accord dignity, we must never judge others harshly. And if you look at the social media, there's a lot of harsh judgment being being played on uh, 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 many people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we look at this example of how one politician does not accord dignity to the rakyat. Rakyat make a simple mistake, but he wants to be popular and also wants to make his party popular. And so he takes it on a level that I've never seen such hatred being fanned. And so we must advise, but never say impolite things to such persons. We don't follow his way. His way is always being very impolite, very kurang haja. This is biasa to him, but not should be to us. So if we look also, This is the effect on our society. Now, just now, one of the speakers talked about education. Ladies and gentlemen, kalau kita ada this kind of graduate, I uh, think uh, that would be the end of our nation. Okay? Because one group of graduate disrespect other races. And they are graduates. Belum lagi ada kerja. But they disrespect. Another group of graduate, Gamis, Mahasiswa Islam, threatened a May 13 on the Jawi issue, of which I was involved directly. And he's still smiling when he said that, I think. And I'm sorry to say that one of the, I'm not sure whether he's a Sabahan, but uh, he did the Heil Hitler salute. And in, you look at the Facebook, he says, I agree with Hitler for killing all those millions of Jews because they are very evil. I said, how, how can you have that attitude? You never met one Jew. You don't even know the children. You're talking about women, children, elderly. You agree? Ladies and gentlemen, when you have this, forget MA63, <laughs> forget economy, and forget everything. I mean, we have this kind of orang muda Coming out, apa nak jadi dengan kita, and apa nak jadi dengan dunia. So this is to me a very very frightening 
scenario that we need to actually uh, deal with. <laughs> I think the battery is not quite good. All right. So what, what values do we need to rebuild Malaysia? We need respect for other across race, religion, and politics. Now, how do we, how do we have that? It's, it's, it's something that we say, oh, memang lah kita kena respect, but, but what does it mean, respect? And we need to have knowledge of heritage. I think Lim Hock Song showed me a movie, what was the name? What was it? Kita, isn't it? But I am ashamed, I don't even know 95% of all those things that were shown. Eh? Throughout all, sampai PhD pun tak tahu what those things that were shown there. And then this question of dignity, ini apa ni dignity? Dignity adalah maruah. You know, your, your sense of worth, your sense of value. If you have somebody like Akmal telling this, you can, you can, and then that sort of thing, this is, this is terrible. This is demeaning. Okay? So, ini macam mana it goes through our education system. Whether it is informal education in the madrasa or in the, in the mosque, whether it's the formal education that we don't treat, these are questions that I think all of us must answer. And I'm very happy that Sarawak is doing this uh, new education. But does it have the idea of creating a new generation of people who respect others with, with dignity? Respect simply means that we don't know everything. It's very simple. If some people think that they know everything, then something is wrong there. Respect means we are grateful to others that we have a similar blood. Now, when I was sick one time, I had to have four packets of blood in my body. And I jokingly asked the doctor, Doctor, ini darah China ke? India ke? Atau <laughs> orang Sarawak ke? You know? <laughs> so the doctor was panicking and said, no, 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 no. We only know as blood A, blood B, negative and things like that. And that is why I said in academia, why do we classify ourselves into China, Melayu, India? Into Sarawakian, Sabahan, Malaysia? We should, kamu adalah kaum A. Kamu adalah kaum B negative, then we can make friends. <laughs> if I know you are B negative, then I can, you know, you can save my life. <laughs> Ini China, Melayu, India, and then we teach each other, okay, we don't need everybody. I'm just waiting for the ulama council to say, Ini darah halal, ini darah haram. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, uh, we need each other sooner or later. Dia macam mana yang some people, you know, in the Muslim society, they're very sensitive. They say, oh no, Prof, we, we, we don't need other non-Muslim, you know. Huh? If you say like that, then you tidak yakin kepada Allah, kepada Islam. Wah, dia nak bercara kat saya. Okay, saya kata, Nabi Muhammad would never survive the first few years if it not for his uncle Abu Talib who was never a Muslim sampai dia meninggal dunia. Nabi Muhammad would have seen the first massacre of the immigrant Muslim if it was not the help of King Negus, a Christian king. And Nabi Muhammad would never have been able to defend Medina if the Jews and Christians did not help him. Ini you belajar agama mana? And you nak ajar saya kata, we don't need anybody. Such arrogance, stupidity. But that is mainstream Islam in Semenanjung. I'm not sure in Sarawak and Sabah, but I think lebih kurang lah. <laughs> All right. So, the dasar, ekonom- uh, the dasar kebudayaan kebangsaan states that uh, budaya Melayu yang penting, yang lain okey lah. <laughs> Which was created right after the May 13. Well, boleh lah masa tu. But I think it's already expired macam our education lah. We should have a new dasar. 
And the new dasa should be to acknowledge the heritage of the past, like what we have here. The Hindu, Buddhist heritage. Go dig up all those uh, artifacts. Now they don't want to dig it up because it will upset Amno's formula. So we need to accord dignity. Dasar kebudayaan kebangsaan kita adalah kita menghormati dan memberi marwah kepada kesemua warisan kita. That should be the dasar. We should be going beyond this kind of identity. The measure of a person in terms of dignity is that it's a very simple thing. If you want to be respected and to be valued, then you honor the other person. And that is what I had learned from a Buddhist monk called Ajahn Brahm, who actually is a British national and became a monk. And he said in one of his teachings, who is the most important person in the world? So many people are thinking, my wife, my, my daughter, my, my mother, my father. Actually, the most important person in the world is the one in front of you. When I heard that, I said, wow, such an incredible, simple, spiritual teaching. Meaning, at any one time, at any moment, at any instant, when you face someone, whoever that might be, give dignity to that person. So this is something which we have not learned through our education system. So for the final slide, I think that in order for us to build what I call this acceptance and also spiritual idea of diversity is by having a new school curriculum, what, what I believe Sarawak is trying to do. But the question here is, how do you handle this? Do you think that this is important? Because just now we were talking about maths, we're talking about science, we're talking about English, but we're not talking about dignity. Marwah. Marwah. Kalau kita tidak ada marwah, kita tidak memberi marwah, then what is the value of us? Rather than the value of our society, our community, our race, macam mana? So this kind of perspective is incredibly important. The next is to establish an institute for civilizational discourse. I hope Sarawak can do this. Why? Because there is an institute of civilizational discourse in University Malaya, tapi dia tak guna satu sen pun. There is. It was dulu under Chandra Muzaffar, and it was very good. After that, it was under somebody else, and I watched. Tak ada apa. Have you ever heard of that institute give a comment on any of the conflicts yang kita ada? Satu pun tak ada. Yang ada, Dr. Tajudin. Okay? There is none. Ini adalah institute yang sepatutnya membawa kita lebih dekat, rapat with each other. Okay? Melalui framework civilizational. Tetapi sekarang, the narrative is controlled by very, very narrow-minded clerics and ulama. And this is where we are. Sampai nak accept donation daripada a brewery company pun, tak mahu, tak boleh. Soalan saya dua for the issue of brewery. Cukai-cukai daripada judi dan <laughs> daripada arak, Adakah diasingkan ataupun dicampurkan? Dijawabnya adalah dicampurkan. That's what I have been told. Kalau dicampurkan, saya punya pencen and orang punya gaji orang Islam pun dapat dari situ. Bukan? Nah, kalau diasingkan, apa nak buat? Nak buat jalan pun semua orang pakai. Ya? Har haram juga. Ya? Jadi kalau <laughs> kalau nak buat bangunan, orang guna. Ah, Saya ada solution. Kalau diasingkan, kalau ulama kata ini haram, okey. Bagi duit haram itu kepada biasiswa anak-anak bukan Islam seluruh Malaysia. Bagi duit haram itu kepada semua pembangunan rumah-rumah ibadat kecuali masjid. You nak haram sangat? Okay, go ahead. Boleh buat macam tu. My policy is never to fight against 
is to cari jalan tepi. <laughs> okay? And so the Institute for Civilization Discourse can stand alone or be part of university, but it must have good people to actually understand what we intend to do in society and politics. Last kali, a national council of elders. Bukan a national council of professors. Itu tak payah. <laughs> elders and experts from different faiths, from different uh, communities. Not the one yang Mahathir buat. Mahathir was very, very clever. He just wanted to give uh, his friend Daim a, 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 a new lease of life. And that's why he created that. And that one had authority, but an illegal authority. This one is simply an advisor. Maybe under the Yang Di Pertuan Negeri, but tidak ada administrative uh, power. They are the conscience of the nation. Because if you have not so good politician like Abang Jo, then uh, these people could say something and people can rally around this kind of conscience. So in ending, my message today is only two. We need to learn spiritually to not only accept dignity, but more importantly, to accord dignity to others. And that the other thing that I want to say, it is and must come from each and every one of us, not just from leaders or political parties. Daripada kita semua. Only we can change Malaysia permanently and to the best that we want. Thank you very much.